हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू अवर यूट्यूब चैनल लेट्स ग्रो आई होप यू आर वेरी वेल एंड डूइंग ग्रेट इन योर लाइफ सो टू डेस्ट टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज कैनाल डिजाइन यूजिंग लेसिस सिल्ट थ्योरी सो इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द डिजाइन दैट हाउ लेसी डिफाइन थ्री डिजाइन नेमली इनिशियल रिजाइम फाइनल रिजाइम एंड ट्रू रिजाइम नाउ वी आर गोइंग थ्रू द procedure that how we can design a canal using this theory i hope you will find this video very helpful so let us start this video without wasting any time according to lacy's the design procedure to build canal is as follows the first point is canal discharge q and mean particle size dm should be known so whenever we want to design any of the canal and these canals are unlined canal keep remember this thing we have to know the discharge because whenever we are going to design a canal we know that we want a canal such that it should be able to move the discharge or to handle to pass the discharge q through it and whatever bed material is there whatever soil we have used the particle size or what we can say that mean particle size which is denoted by the dm should be known before starting the calculation so there are two parameters which should be known prior to the design steps so if we are having q with us we are having dm with us now we can start designing the canal from the mean size or diameter of the particle dm silt factor is first calculated using the below expression so we are having the expression for the silt factor f which is equal to 1.76 into under root of dm where dm is the mean particle size and the unit of this mean particle size is in mm put this here in terms of mm and this mean particle size can be calculated using the grain size distribution so initially we have to take a sample from the canal bed and start sieving it manually or with using some sieve shaker and we have to plot the particle size distribution curve or grain size distribution curve and from where we can decide the value of mean particle size dm silt factor values for different types of soil are tabulated here so there are different types of soil and if we know the type of soil they are in the river bed or uh, sorry canal bed then we can calculate the silt factor if the soil type is fine silt we can take a silt factor ranging from 0.5 to 0.7 in case of medium silt f is equal to 0.85 in case of standard silt it is taken as 1 in case of medium silt it is taken as 1.25 and if it is coarse sand we can take a silt factor f equal to 1.5 and if uh, there there is any numerical in which it is not mentioned that what is the value of f or there is no definition for the soil type so in that case we can use the standard silt as a reference and we can take the value of silt factor f is equal to 1 so that we can initiate the calculations now using discharge and silt factor velocity v can be calculated by the expression as follows now we are having the silt factor with us which we have calculated by using the formula and in the beginning we know the discharge so q is known to us f is known to us now we can use this formula to calculate the velocity of flow velocity of flow v is equal to q f square divided by 140 to the power 1 by 6 so from here you can calculate the velocity of flow in the canal now after attaining the velocity of canal flow find the area of the canal by dividing discharge with velocity so now we are having equation q equals to area into velocity this is popular continuity equation q is equal to av 
and now we if we want to know the area we will what we will do we will take the discharge and divide it by velocity so discharge is known to us and velocity we have calculated earlier so now we are having the area now we can calculate the hydraulic mean depth r which is can be calculated as 5 v square divided by 2 f and the weighted parameter p can be calculated as 4.75 under root q here q is in terms of meter cube per second so now we are having area with us hydraulic mean depth with us and weighted parameter so now we are having these three parameters so now using these three parameters we can calculate the breadth of the canal depth of the canal and what is the side slope usually side slope is kept fi fixed as the most efficient trapezoidal channel can be made uh, having a side slope of 60 degree from the horizontal so usually we use that other thing is if you have the soil data uh, so based on that we can decide this angle of repose and we can calculate the design channel so based upon all these you can simply calculate it what should be the breadth and depth of the river because we are having the area weighted parameter and hydraulic mean depth now assume the bed slope as value or find by substituting the values of silt factor and canal discharge in the following formula now if you want to calculate the bed slope as simply put all these uh, values f raised to the power 5 by 3 divided by 3340 into q raised to the power 1 by 6 q and f is known to us so simply by using this formula you can calculate the slope of the canal now we are going to discuss about the drawbacks of lessee's silt theory so number one is lessee did not explain the properties that govern the alluvial channel so there are some missing properties which is not defined by the lessees that what are the properties that is governing the that alluvial channel in general flow is different at bed and sides of the channel which requires two different silt factor but lessee derived only one silt factor so in lessee's theory we usually use the single silt factor f as we have discussed earlier but if you see that there are two different type of materials one is at the bed of the canal and other is at the slant length or the inclined portion of the canal so we have to use the two silt factor for two different uh, types or two different inclination at one inclination and one at horizontal so but uh, in Lessie's theory we use the single silt factor only the semi elliptical shape proposed by Lessie as the ideal shape of the channel is not convincing Lessie did not consider the silt concentration in his equation if we look at the equations proposed by the Lessie there is no term for the silt con concentration means Lessie avoid this uh, important property that how the silt concentration can vary the channel regime attrition of silt particle is ignored by Lessie and Lessie did not give proper definitions for the silt grade and silt charge so basically silt concentration or the silt charge how much silt is coming or what is the particle size distribution or gradation of silt grade are avoided by the Lessie so I hope you find this video very informative if you really like this video you can hit that like button you can subscribe our channel let's let's grow for more informative videos thank you so much to watch this lesson till the end bye bye take care